Millions of Americans once believed that smoking helped them relax without realizing it was actually the nicotine making them anxious and restless. Right now as you're watching this video, over 185,000 cigarettes are being lit around the world. A staggering number, each one exchanging a momentary breath for long-term disease, lung damage, or a quiet, preventable death. That small cigarette is in fact the final product of an astonishing industrial journey. From sun-soaked tobacco fields to factories capable of producing tens of thousands of cigarettes per minute with the kind of speed and precision that rivals any modern manufacturing sector. But have you ever wondered why a product labeled may cause death is still consumed day after day without pause? In this video, we'll uncover the full production process behind a single cigarette and explore why, despite all warnings, that trail of smoke continues to linger in our world. More than just a consumer product, tobacco once stood as a cultural icon, gracing the hands of Hollywood stars etched into the frames of classic films and becoming a visual language of rebellion, allure, and defiance. At its peak, a single puff taken by an actor on screen could be worth the equivalent of $25,000 today, a figure that speaks volumes about how deeply this industry once shaped public taste and behavior across entire generations. But behind that glamorous facade lies a price humanity is still paying. Small in form yet almost unfathomable in cost. A single cigarette carries consequences far beyond its size. Each year, over 8 million deaths worldwide are linked to tobacco use. A toll that surpasses the combined deaths from HIV, traffic accidents and drug abuse. Even more disturbing, 1.2 million of those victims never smoked at all. They simply breathed in the smoke left behind. And perhaps most unsettling of all, it takes just 1 to 2 milligrams of nicotine, found in every cigarette, to trigger a reaction in the brain, creating a false sense of euphoria and setting the stage for chemical dependency. Before becoming the raw material for billions of cigarettes, the journey of the tobacco plant begins with something almost invisible to the naked eye. Tobacco seeds are incredibly small, around 10,000 of them weigh just one gram. Because of their delicate size, they're never sown directly into open fields. Instead, they're started in specialized seedling trays inside greenhouses or mesh-covered nurseries, where temperature, light, and humidity are carefully regulated. Each tray is filled with loose, well-aerated soil. The seeds are sprinkled evenly across the surface, never buried, because tobacco requires light to germinate. A single tray can support 200 to 400 seedlings. Sometimes, a paper-thin layer of soil is dusted on top, not to cover, but to retain moisture while still allowing sunlight to reach the seeds below. Within just 5 to 10 days, the first green sprouts emerge, tiny, but alive. This is the quiet beginning of a cultivation process that, from this moment on, will be measured down to the hour. After about six weeks in the nursery trays, when the seedlings reach a height of 10 to 15 centimeters, they're ready for the next step, leaving the controlled environment of the greenhouse and heading out to the open fields. But unlike in the past, when this task relied on human hands, it is now performed by a machine engineered with millimeter-level precision. The transplanting machine acts like an extended arm of the farmer. Each small soil plug holding a seedling is gently lifted by a specialized gripping head, rotated to the correct orientation, and placed into the ground at a perfectly controlled depth and spacing. Advanced sensors continuously monitor soil moisture and terrain angle, adjusting the pressure and planting speed to ensure each seedling is neither too loose nor too tight in the soil. Behind the planting mechanism, a set of rollers gently presses the soil around the root zone, firm enough to stabilize the seedling, yet light enough to allow proper growth. This single machine can transplant up to 12,000 seedlings per hour matching the productivity of around 30 manual laborers, dramatically increasing efficiency while ensuring uniformity across vast planting areas. 
As tobacco plants take root and begin to stretch upward, field care shifts into a phase of higher precision. At this stage, the leaves start to unfurl, forming a dense canopy over the rows, a clear sign that the plants have entered a vigorous growth period. To support this phase effectively, the drip irrigation system combined with soluble fertilizer application is activated. Thin plastic tubes run along each row, delivering water and nutrients directly to the root zone, minimizing waste and maximizing efficiency. This system doesn't just provide hydration, it also carries micronutrient fertilizers, carefully adjusted to match each stage of the plant's development. As a result, the plants grow faster and produce thicker, darker green leaves, an essential factor in determining the quality of the final tobacco product. Every parameter, from water volume and nutrient concentration to timing of irrigation, is tightly monitored and controlled, ensuring optimal crop performance and uniformity across the entire field. As tobacco plants enter the flowering stage, typically around June or July, small purple blossoms begin to appear at the top of each stalk. While visually appealing, these flowers offer no practical value and consume a significant portion of the plant's nutrients. If left untouched, they can drastically reduce the quality of the leaves, the most valuable part of the tobacco plant. This is the moment when farmers must intervene to redirect the plant's energy back into the foliage. Depending on the scale of cultivation, this task can be done manually or with the help of specialized machines. On smaller farms, growers often use their hands to pinch off the buds and remove the young flowers one by one. In larger plantations, high-speed rotary blade machines are deployed to perform the task efficiently and uniformly. The cutting height is carefully calibrated to protect the main stalk from damage. Regardless of the method, the objective remains the same, to concentrate all of the plant's resources into its leaves an essential step in preparing for the upcoming harvest. About three to five weeks after topping, tobacco plants reach their peak development, leaves thick, dark green, and rich in essential compounds, marking the ideal moment for harvest. In the past, farmers would hand pull each plant, a time-consuming and labor-intensive process. Today, on vast commercial farms, that task is carried out by automated harvesters, engineered for precision. These machines are equipped with optical and moisture sensors capable of reading the physiological state of each plant, analyzing leaf color, thickness, and ripeness to determine the optimal harvest point. Once conditions are met, a mechanical arm gently lifts each plant from the soil shaking off excess dust without tearing the leaves or damaging the fiber structure. Each harvester can process up to 8,000 plants per hour, more than enough to keep industrial drying lines running non-stop, day and night. Immediately after harvesting, the leaves are not stacked in piles, but arranged upright in racks, with the stems pointing downward. This positioning promotes airflow and prevents moisture from accumulating, which is critical to avoid spoilage before curing. The seamless combination of intelligent harvesting technology and meticulous post-harvest handling has become the backbone of quality control in the modern tobacco industry, ensuring that every leaf meets the highest standards before it enters the next stage of transformation. After harvest, tobacco leaves remain soft and moist, far from ready for long-term storage. To preserve them properly, they must undergo controlled drying in sealed chambers, not sun drying as once practiced in traditional farming. Before entering the curing phase, the leaves are arranged upright in baskets or carts, stems facing downward to prevent moisture accumulation. Workers then transfer the bundles into curing chambers, hanging them on tiered racks spaced evenly apart. Depending on the type of tobacco, different curing methods may be used. Hot air drying, smoke curing, or natural airflow. In modern factories, the most common technique is precision-controlled hot air curing. Warm air is pushed upward from the floor, circulating evenly around every layer of leaves. A network of sensors monitors temperature and humidity, maintaining them within a margin of just 0.5 degrees. 
On average, each curing chamber can process up to 8 tons of leaves over 5 to 8 days. It's a quiet transformation. Moisture slowly evaporates from each fiber, leaving behind a stable structure and the signature aroma of fully cured tobacco. Once cured, tobacco leaves undergo their most dramatic transformation, shredding. Industrial cutting systems are equipped with 12 to 24 ultra-durable alloy blades, evenly mounted around a rotating shaft that spins at up to 3,000 revolutions per minute. At that speed, the machine can process over 1,000 kilograms of leaves per hour, producing millions of tobacco strands within the same time frame. Before slicing, the leaves are stacked and lightly compressed to ensure shape stability. As the blades sweep through, the leaves are cut into fine ribbons measuring just 0.5 to 0.8 millimeters in width, a precisely calculated size that affects how the tobacco burns, its flavor, and the sensation when smoked. Only strands that meet strict standards are allowed to proceed down the production line. The rest, imperfect cuts and fragments, are collected separately. But they're not wasted. These remnants are often recycled into lower-cost products or compressed into capsules for use in heat-not-burn tobacco technologies. Immediately after the tobacco leaves are shredded into fine strands, they move on to the next stage, blending. In large-scale factories, the tobacco is poured into massive horizontal steel drums that rotate evenly, mixing hundreds of kilograms of material in just a few minutes. In smaller workshops, the process retains its artisanal touch. Workers rely on their experience to judge by scent, softness, and elasticity, adjusting the blend by hand. It's at this stage that natural additives are introduced, ingredients that give each cigarette its distinctive aftertaste. The subtle signature that sets one brand apart from another once the flame is lit. After the blending stage, the shredded tobacco enters the shaping phase, where the rolling machine acts as a central spindle, molding the final form of the cigarette. Specialized rolling paper, each reel stretching up to 7,000 meters, is fed parallel to the machine's axis. A series of rollers presses the paper tightly against the tobacco strand, then seals it with a thin layer of odorless adhesive that doesn't affect the flavor. Each cigarette produced has a consistent diameter and weight. The machine operates at a remarkable speed, up to 20,000 cigarettes per minute. Every unit comes out in perfect alignment, with no deviation in form or center. This stage demands high precision, ensuring uniform quality across the entire production batch. Once the continuous strand of tobacco has been rolled into a stable cylindrical shape, it moves on to the cutting stage. This process uses between two to four alloy blades, evenly distributed around a rotating shaft, spinning at speeds between 6,000 and 9,000 revolutions per minute. On average, each cutting unit can handle over 40,000 cuts per hour. Before slicing, the tobacco strand passes through a shaping guide to ensure proper alignment and maintain a centered core. It is then precisely segmented into uniform lengths. Accuracy at this stage is critical. The cut must be clean, without tearing the outer rolling paper, compressing the structure unevenly, or causing the inner tobacco to spill. Once the tobacco rod has been cut into uniform segments, the next step is to attach the filter, the final barrier between smoke and the smoker. The filter assembling machine operates with high precision, pressing the tobacco body and pre-cut filter tips together from both ends. Each filter is aligned perfectly and, and inserted without distorting the structure or compressing the inner tobacco. Next, a strip of tipping paper is wrapped around the junction, sealed with an ultra-thin layer of adhesive that firmly secures the connection without altering the taste. This paper does more than just hold the parts together. It's micro-perforated to regulate airflow during inhalation, creating a smoother and milder smoking experience. And just like that, the cigarette is born complete in form, and ready to begin its journey out into the world. Once each cigarette has been completed, both in body and filter, it enters the final stage of the production chain. Packaging. A single modern packing machine can finish up to 500 packs per minute, which means more than 8 packs every second. 
Each cigarette is lined up precisely into a tray, then wrapped in a specialized foil. This isn't just ordinary moisture-resistant paper. It's aluminum foil coated with a food-grade adhesive that helps preserve the aroma and protect the flavor of the tobacco over time. Once sealed, the cigarettes are inserted into branded cardboard cartons. The machines perform with rhythmic precision, lining up the sticks, closing the lid, applying adhesive, and finally wrapping the pack in a thin shrink film. A barcode is then affixed to each pack, enabling traceability throughout the supply chain. Every step is monitored by optical and pressure sensors to ensure no pack is left open, deformed, or missing product. Only after passing this final inspection are the cigarettes cleared to leave the factory, ready for global distribution. From a tiny seed to a neatly packaged cigarette, it's a journey that spans months, shaped by soil, technology, and the quiet decisions of people behind the scenes. If this video gave you a deeper look into what lies behind the smoke, and you'd like to keep exploring the agricultural and industrial stories hidden in everyday products, don't forget to hit like, share the video, leave a comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so you won't miss the next journey with us.